It's finally spring in New England, which means I finally have access to the outdoors to do science. The first thing you'll typically notice about spring are the plants, and plant cells, unlike animal cells, have cell walls which are composed primarily of cellulose. To that end, I decided to make a video on extracting cellulose from whatever plant material I could find in my yard. I'm going to do this using the same procedure that companies do to make paper from wood pulp, but obviously the quality and quantity of cellulose won't quite be the same. In any case, my first step is to make my plant material into a pulp, and I do this by grinding it down in a blender I got at Walmart. This is a pretty crappy blender, so I try to pick off and use only leaves while leaving behind any roots or stems or dirt or anything that might damage or destroy the motor. A bit of water is added to help get this started, and then I just blend it down until it's as homogeneous as possible. Blending it will reduce the total volume, which will give me more space to add a little more plant material and repeat the cycle again. This process will result in a wet plant slurry, and my first step after this is to remove as much water as I can by using a cheesecloth or some sort of filter. For this part, I basically just made a big tea bag and squeezed as much water out as I could. The plant debris left behind at this point is a mixture of cellulose as well as secondary polymers and copolymers that help act as structural material for the plant. These aren't cellulose, so I don't want them, and my next step is going to be to destroy them using alkaline hydrolysis. The alkaline hydrolysis is conducted by mixing my plant pulp with a 20% sodium hydroxide solution. This will hydrolyze and destroy the secondary polymers and copolymers, while leaving cellulose mostly intact. This only works because cellulose has a sort of crystalline structure, and it's very durable and mostly unaffected by hydrolysis. With that said, after the hydroxide is added, I turn on high stirring and let this sit for about two hours with no applied heat to allow all of the non-cellulose material to dissolve. When I come back two hours later, the slurry is much darker, almost black, and I isolate my cellulose by passing it through this filter. As I said before, the cellulose won't dissolve and it'll be caught in the filter while everything else will pass through. The issue at this point is that the plant material I'm left with still contains a lot of organic compounds and oils that are present in plants, and the next step is going to be to remove those. To do that, I add 150 milliliters of the organic solvent orthoxylene, which will dissolve all non-cellulose organics still present in this mixture. Orthoxylene is immiscible in water and creates this very dense ball of plant material at the bottom that's really hard for my stir bar to actually move around. And to get around that, I just use the glass stir rod as much as I can and let this dissolve for about 30 minutes. After said 30 minutes, the mixture is filtered again, which will remove all of the orthoxylene as well as all the stuff that it dissolved that we wanted to get rid of. This will leave behind my crude and very discolored cellulose, which I then rinse with ethanol to remove all of the excess xylene. Once this is mostly dry, I transfer it back to a beaker for my final bleaching step. This step is done to destroy any organic pigments that might be discoloring my cellulose and leave behind a pure white product. Many different bleaching agents can be used here, and even though it's not standard in industry, I just use sodium hypochlorite, which is Clorox. This step typically only takes about 20 minutes, but as you can see, I have some pine needles in here that didn't really fully break down, so I let this go for about 45 minutes. As you can see here, I also added more water to allow my stir bar to actually be able to mix this thoroughly. In any case, after about 30 to 40 minutes, I dump this through my filter again, and this time I'm left with mostly pure cellulose. This cellulose is rinsed several times with distilled water to remove as much of the bleach as possible, and at that point, this is what I'm left with. Now, my original idea for this project was to make this cellulose into a little piece of paper, but I'm a chemist, not really a paper maker, and it didn't turn out very well. My first idea was to just flatten it, which didn't work, it was pretty stupid, and my second idea was to flatten it into a mesh, which was also stupid and didn't work, but it was a little better. The reason the second method didn't work is that as the cellulose dried, it contracted and cracked apart. You'll also notice that the cellulose here is not paper white and has some discoloration to it, and that has everything to do with the very extreme discoloration of my starting material. In any case, here's my final product, and if anybody has any tips on making paper, let me know. Um, I might do this project again if it's popular enough, but regardless, I hope you like this, and follow for more.